How's it going? In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to file your taxes as a small business. In my case, I'm an eBay reseller. I'm not a tax professional, so this is just my opinion. So take it with a grain of salt. We're also gonna talk about Fallon Banking Service. They're an all-in-one banking service that can help with your taxes, and they're also the sponsor of today's video. We're gonna talk more about them later. In this video, we're gonna cover a number of different subjects about taxes. The first thing we're gonna talk about is your tax obligations. Pretty much like what taxes are, why do you have to pay them as an eBay reseller? We're gonna hit on record keeping and organization. Probably the most important part of this is just keeping things organized, how to go about that. Classifying your income and expenses, meaning like when you buy something at a yard sale, what is that classified as? What does it mean when you spend gas on a road trip to go sourcing, things like that. We're also gonna talk about tax forms and deadlines. That's pretty much April 15th in a nutshell, like the general date that you need to finish your taxes, but there are ways you can kind of push it back and also some things you might need to do along the way if you are selling quite a bit. We're gonna hit on tax deductions for eBay resellers. Tax deductions, there's a number of different ones you can take. Some people aren't aware of them and then whenever you shift on how you file your taxes, some of those you actually lose. So it is important to know like which route you wanna go down and I'll kind of share my experiences and thoughts on that. Lastly, we're gonna hit on like professional advice. Like when is it a good idea to get a CPA? When is it a good idea to pay for some help? And do you even need to do that? Like how much time does it actually take to do your taxes if you have everything squared away? All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is just like an overview of what taxes are for a small business. And I'm gonna to try to keep this as like kind of basic language as possible because one, like I said, I'm not an expert and two, it's, it's a bit confusing. So for starters, the most like common one, it's income tax. Now, what is income tax? Income tax is basically the money, the net profit that you make at the end of the year. So that means you have your total like revenue, that's all the money that came into your eBay, and then you start taking off your expenses, which would be like your cost of goods, uh, your shipping labels, anything like used to run the business pretty much can be qualified as an expense in most cases. And then the income tax is the percentage of tax that you have to pay based on that net profit. And depending on how much you make kind of shifts like what that percentage is. The next tax I want to talk about is self-employment tax. Now, self-employment tax typically represents 15.3%. That's going to be your Social Security and Medicare tax. In addition to that tax, if you have employees, which I know a lot of you guys out there are just doing this part-time or it's like retirement income, doing everything yourself. But if you do have employees, technically you're supposed to pay self-employment tax, which is their uh, Social Security and Medicare. So the employee themselves pay it, and then you as an owner would have to match it pretty much and pay that as well. Another tax is sales tax. Now this is different than all the other taxes thus far. Sales tax, luckily for us eBay sellers and most platforms out there, they'll handle the sales tax, meaning they're gonna get it from the buyer and make them pay that tax, and they're actually gonna remit it to your uh, state. So basically, the only time you would have to worry about that, which a lot of people don't do, is say if I sold something in person, I would technically have to charge sales tax on that sale. So if I charge $100, I would actually have to pay sales tax on that $100 sale. Now, a lot of people don't do that because it's cash deals, you know, under the table type stuff. But technically, you know, if you're running pop up booths or maybe you have like an antique booth or something like that, there's going to be sales tax involved with that as well. The last tax that I think is pretty relevant, this is estimated tax. Now, if you are selling quite a bit, you're going to want to pay estimated tax throughout the year. And basically what that is, is because you're making so much money, you have to pay quarterly taxes to show the IRS that like you're not going to just, you know, take all that money and run, I guess. I'm not really sure, but there is a penalty involved if you don't pay estimated tax. Now, like I said, I don't know what the thresholds for those numbers are, but uh, that is something that you have to pay as well. I don't know if it has to be said, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's very important to take this tax stuff serious mainly because you can find yourself in really big trouble, whether that's penalties, fines, or like going to jail for something like this. It's very important because when you're running this business, it seems like kind of like a game or something fun that you can do, but you are a legit business and you need to treat it as a legit business because if you don't, there's ways that the IRS you know, may start poking in and try to get that money from you because uh, the world works with commerce and whether it's good, bad, and different, however you feel about it, it's something you have to deal with and it's it's a problem. So hopefully this video kind of helps with that. Now that we have a little bit of an understanding of what the taxes are and why we need to pay them, we need to talk about record keeping and being organized. 
That's where the sponsor of today's video comes in play, Found. Found is an all-in-one banking service that's designed to make self-employment easier. Found is an app built with many tools. It can make banking, bookkeeping, taxes, and invoices easier than ever. Found will provide a business debit MasterCard that seamlessly tracks and categorizes your expenses. Helping you save on taxes, you can also run reports, send invoices, save receipts, and pay all taxes from the app. And Found's auto-saving for taxes means you'll never have to be caught unprepared at tax time. There are no hidden fees, no minimums, just smart banking that saves time. Sign up for an account in minutes, find out why thousands of businesses rely on Found. Love what you do, and let Found do the rest. One of the major benefits of going with a company like Found is you can eliminate the need for QuickBooks or any other service that like tracks your expenses. Now, previously I was using GoDaddy because it used to be free and then they eliminated that service. So I decided to go with QuickBooks and I've been paying them every month. Now my CPA, I send the reports to them and it pretty much just tracks like all my expenses. Found can do the exact same thing. When they reached out to me and started explaining the benefits of their service, I was thinking, Maybe I am doing the wrong thing by going with QuickBooks. They recently told me that there's a feature where you can actually have your accountants go into Found and like integrate with them so that they can understand the platform and be able to use it just as they would with QuickBooks. And my accountants are like experts when it comes to dealing with that type of data. I myself am not. But what I can tell you is Found is run by some extremely smart people. I'm going to consider going with them in the future. I just wanted to like finish up this tax here with QuickBooks and how everything's set up and then start making the shift towards someone like them. If you are interested in trying out Found, go ahead and click the link down below and I appreciate you guys for sponsoring this video. When it comes to keeping records and being organized with your business and the numbers, it's extremely important. Reason being is you want to know where every dollar is going and where every dollar is coming in, mainly because you need to know if your business is profitable. There's tons of resellers out there that are completely unorganized. They have like massive death piles of inventory that they bought years ago from different garage sales because what happens is you buy all that stuff and then you sell like the best couple items and the rest you don't even process. You're pretty much just kind of like leaving money out there and yeah, I guess you can say, hey, I know I made some money on this, but you're not really sure like how much you actually made. Now, my uncle has been in the banking industry for a very long time. He's a senior vice president of a bank in Panama. And he did tell me when it comes to doing taxes, you don't have to pay anyone to do it. You just have to be organized. Much easier said than done. I myself pay somebody to do my taxes just because I don't like keeping organized. But what I found out is through my income video, whenever I showed you guys the breakdown of all my expenses and how much money I made on eBay last year, you still have to do some work. You can't completely rid yourself of all work. Now you you might be able to, but you have to provide the data to the CPA and you'll have to pay them more for them to crunch all the numbers and keep it organized. So it's kind of a give and a take when it comes to like how much you need to do, but it is very reassuring to know when you do your numbers and then your CPA does the numbers and they like challenge you and, and check like, hey, where'd this credit card expense come from? Or like, where did this money go? Then you can kind of come to an understanding that like, okay, my numbers are sound, my business is profitable, I am making money, and it's proved so that the IRS doesn't have any way they can kind of like try to get more money from you and you can just be assured that you're doing the right thing when it comes to your business and all the numbers. There are some methods of accounting that don't involve QuickBooks and basically what that is is say I do a private buy from somebody and I withdraw $500 from my checking account, I need to log that $500 withdrawal as an actual like cost of goods if I do buy inventory with that. Another form of accounting and like keeping track would be uh, your mileage. So you wanna keep track of your mileage and I just use pen and paper. I have a notebook in my car and I write down anytime I go to a thrift store, that's the miles dedicated to the business and then there's a certain percentage or not percentage, but there's like, I think it's 62.5 cents per mile that you can deduct off. So at the end of the year, if you have, you know, let's just say a hundred miles, that's going to be like $62 and 50 cents that you can take as an expense for the business. Basically QuickBooks found anybody out there that has a way to track credit card expenses. That's really the way to go. If you mainly source garage sales, I would suggest having like a pen and paper, just writing down like how much you spent. Or you could say like every time I withdraw a hundred dollars a week to spend on garage sales, then throughout the year all those withdrawal transactions just keep that money set aside for inventory and then make sure you use that as your deduction now a little tougher but um, definitely you know good to have it separated and it's good to have a separate checking account for your business so that when you do do those withdrawals you can have it 
very clear. Like you don't have like grocery bills and a bunch of other stuff that's not tied to the business. So the key to this is keeping it in its own lane. And the way I do that is with a separate checking account and separate credit card for the business. Now this doesn't apply to everybody who's just selling on eBay part-time or even if eBay is like your only income, but say you have multiple streams of income. And I don't mean if you have like a part-time job at a Wendy's or something like that, but say you do freelance work or your other 1099 type contract works from other people, you can also put that in as like a sale of um, that income. So what I mean by that is like, say I take on a sponsor and they pay me money, I have to put that as like, a sale like that income comes in and I have to pay taxes on that so with QuickBooks I would just kind of categorize that a little different I would put you know like a YouTube sale or a sponsor sale or um, say I did an advertising gig where I made a reel for somebody and then I would just put that money coming in as like a separate sale and that's how I keep mine organized some people would say like oh have different LLCs for every business that makes income but uh, the people that I talk with to do my taxes, they said, well, you can just categorize that as like under the umbrella of Taylor Exchange and just have like those as different little um, streams of income, but it, it, it almost looks like a sale. So it doesn't add into like my eBay stuff, but it's like a, it's in its separate lane. Say I'm building this YouTube channel and I want to buy like the microphones or like a new um, phone stand or something like that. I could just expense that off because I'm using that money on that product to like make an income. I'm not just buying it for myself to use. I'm like going to be able to use that because it is a business. It just doesn't have like its own LLC or anything like that. And I know a lot of people are just like sole proprietors, which is fine. I just kind of wanted to throw that out there that if you do have other streams of income that are like little businesses, you can also have your incomes and expenses, but you want to do keep it separate from eBay. I mean, you can put it all in QuickBooks. You just have to label it separate so that you know, okay, like this money came from here and this expense was for this. Now, when you file your taxes and it has like office income expenses, you can add your other business office expenses to that. Uh, but just just so that we're clear, that's that's kind of how I do it. And it may not be like the way everyone does it. And there's probably cleaner ways to do it, but um, you know that's just something that I've been doing thus far. With that being said, there's also 1099s to consider. So these types of tax forms you're gonna get from eBay. And I don't know if eBay gives it to everybody or if you have to sell a certain amount. Um, I think it was like 20,000 or like 200 transactions on eBay and they're like currently trying to lower that, I guess. But uh, YouTube will send one out as well. Uh, if you make money like Amazon affiliates, they'll send you a 1099. Anything business related that comes to my mailbox, I pretty much pass on to the CPA. But essentially a 1099 is gonna be like what that platform sees that you made for the year. And that's very important because, you know, say uh, say you're reporting less to the IRS, but then eBay has that 1099 that they gave you. Well, be assured they sent that to the IRS as well. So they're going to match those up and look at your numbers to make sure they match. So, um, you know, for probably decades, people were trying to like not um, show like how much they were making. And, you know, that's you know definitely not... The way to do it but you know that is a way people were trying to get around this and now it's it's a little more difficult because all these entities have like the electronic uh you know systems built up that they can kind of send those off to different people and they can um, start like cracking down on that so be aware of 1099s if you don't have one you could always like contact the platform and say like hey am i supposed to get a 1099 like what's the deal and they'll tell you like well you didn't sell enough or whatever and in that case you know you kind of fall probably in like another bracket of like irs may not be going after somebody who only made five thousand dollars in sales but you know if you make like me two hundred thousand dollars in sales they it may pop up as like okay this dude that's kind of strange. It's a big number. Like, let's figure out why this single person is making this much money and, and let's make sure that he's paying us what, you know, he's supposed to be paying us. In addition to tax forms like that, if you have a W-2 employee like myself, I have her uh, W-2 and then I have like the taxes I pay for her. And actually, because I run mine as an S corporation, I have my own W-2. The benefits of the S corporation to my understanding is I have to pay myself a reasonable wage for the position. So the position would basically be like based on your location, the say a clothing manager would make because that's pretty much what I am as an eBay reseller. Like I manage the inventory, I run sales, that kind of job. And, and say it's like 30,000 for my town. In previous videos I talked about like the average income for my town is extremely low. Like it's not a big city. Uh, the cost of living here is, is very low in comparison to other places in the country, but 
say say you pay yourself thirty thousand, but the business itself made seventy thousand. So that other forty thousand does not get taxed the same way as the thirty thousand that I pay myself as an employee. And then you can take like owner draws off of the forty, and um, there's just different there's different uh, ways to manipulate the money like that. But you do have to be making enough in order to do that. For example, you can't say, okay, our business made forty thousand dollars, and I'm only going to pay myself ten thousand as like the employee of the business. It has to be a regional, reasonable wage um, based on like the area that you live and the work that you're doing. Something to think about, but that's that's the main reason I went the CPA route because I didn't truly understand um, how to go about that or the benefit of it. But I can tell you it's a pretty significant benefit because that 40000 I believe, does not get hit with the Social Security and Medicare income that my uh, 30,000 does as a W2 employee of the business. So in addition to that, there are some deadlines for taxes. We talked about April 15th. That's the day that you're supposed to have your taxes done. I think you can push it back a month and maybe even like two months. I'm not entirely sure, but I always have mine done around February. That's usually when all the 1099s come in and I have time to kind of go over my books to make sure that my CPA is getting all the information that they need. Another couple of deadlines to be aware of is there's four quarters throughout the year, and those quarters are where you would pay your estimated taxes. And also, if you have a sales tax permit, you're going to want to pay that either monthly or quarterly, just depending on how much you're doing. And um, let's start with the estimated taxes first. So based on how much money you expect to make in that quarter, you need to pay like a rough estimate of what the taxes are going to be on that. Now, very tough to determine if you've never done it before, but if you ask a professional, they'll be able to set you up and make sure you send that off to the IRS. You pretty much do a username password through the IRS and you give them the money into the void and then hopefully at the end of the year, if you do your returns properly and make your deductions properly, you should get a lot of that money back. In addition to paying your quarterly taxes on those dates, there's also gonna be your sales tax permit. And what that is, is if you have, I don't know if you can do it without an LLC or as a sole proprietor or just you have to have an LLC to do it, but if you apply for a sales tax permit, what that means is you're gonna be able to buy your inventory without paying sales tax. You would have to contact the Secretary of State of your state and then file, like apply for it. And then they're gonna give you like, uh, a bunch of papers and you pretty much show that to the cashiers and some thrift stores don't even bother to do it most of the major ones will have a process to do it and you have to show them the form and usually fill out a piece of paper but you can avoid paying the uh, sales tax on that however you have to show the uh, secretary of state on that site that they have for your state and it's going to show like how much money you made in sales for that state for that either month or quarter and you know, kind of like give them that data. You can't just not do it or else you can get a penalty for that. It's like 50 bucks. I already got one of them because I got totally confused on like, you know, showing them that data. So that was kind of a, a learning experience this year. But those fall in line with the quarterly taxes. So like when you do your estimated taxes, you can also do your sales tax permit uh, mm -hmm. reporting and kind of knock that out both at the same time. When it comes to all this tax stuff, it's a bit overwhelming. It's very hard to understand and it's hard to tell if you're doing it right because no one really gives you like a check mark or like lets you know unless you call these people that, um, you know, it takes a while to get a hold of some people and then it like also they don't want to give you definite answers. That's why I think it's very important to contact CPAs in your area. And there's a couple good ways you can do this. One of the ways that I went, or the way that I went, is I went to the local college in my town and I asked the business department, am I doing this right? Like I didn't know what even to do, but I would suggest getting an appointment with somebody that pretty much swims in this stuff year round. Like their job is to understand uh, small businesses and things like that. And they can usually have a lot of resources they can like lead you in those directions. So the local college had like, I think it was four different CPAs you can contact. And I decided to call them and I had a meeting with them. And I do think it's nice to have it in person. Totally not necessary. My CPA, he actually will take on clients out of state, but it's nice just to go in and sit there and have them explain to me in person, like, you know, this is how this needs to be done. This is what we need. And it's well worth the expense. I think I think total this year with the S Corporation, with my family's filing, with them doing um, additional work to clean up my books because I was making some very critical errors on QuickBooks because I just didn't know what I was doing. I was putting things in the wrong category and it was actually showing up um, just wrong. And I had to get that fixed. And that's kind of why the income video took a while to get out. But uh, 
Anyway, it was less than like $1,000 for all the work they did to get everything straight. And then when you think about how much money was saved by them doing it because of the expenses and everything, all that money ends up coming back anyway. Definitely possible to do this stuff on your own, but calling a CPA, somebody who has 10, 20 years experience in this, I mean, think about it. Like, how long have you been doing anything? You know, if, you, if you've been doing eBay 20 years, you're probably a pretty solid eBay seller. But if you've been doing taxes through TurboTax or Tax Slayer and you're doing it like just your basic taxes through a W-2 employee, like that's pretty easy stuff. But when you have all these things to expense and you may not know, like, oh, I can expense my internet, I can expense part of my phone bill or my office in my house, like all these different things, you know, it, it gets a little complicated. So it definitely helps to pay somebody so that they can explain to you, even if you only do it for like a year or two. And then you're like, okay, I think I got a good grasp of like what I do, or I can just copy like the stuff from before. Then, um, yeah, you can kind of go about it like that, but, uh, definitely worth the investment in my opinion, because for example, like uh, before I had the S corporation, I was deducting part of this house. And then whenever I did the S corp, they said, you can't take a home deduction. You can do a business deduction. Like my office that I have, um, that I pay monthly, I can take that off, but I can't no longer take like my house expense. And that's something I didn't know. Also, if things update in the tax world, they're going to be the first ones to know, and they'll be able to let you know. So you're not led astray or you're not making mistakes when it comes to that. So I just wanted to like hit the surface with the taxes when it comes to eBay reselling or like running your own small business. And we just kind of scratched the surface. You can definitely go in depth on some of these topics. Basically in a nutshell, taxes suck. <laughs> They're just something that you have to deal with and who knows what that money is really getting spent on. That's part of a problem too that we don't wanna get into in this video. But if you guys did learn anything or you uh, enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out found in the description, like I said before. and. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any questions, please put them down. If you have any corrections, please let me know. Because like I said, this is just my opinion, not a professional. But I can tell you taxes suck a lot less when you have people that can help you with them. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.